Hello and welcome to the HR Like a Boss podcast. I'm your host, John Bernadovich. I have embarked on a journey to get to know amazingly awesome HR and business professionals with the hope to find out what it takes to do HR Like a Boss. If you enjoy the show, please make sure that you subscribe and hit that five-star rating. Welcome again back to the HR Like a Boss podcast. I'm your host, John Bernadovich. I cannot tell you how excited I am to have Sabine Gideon on the show today. She is an author, a podcaster, an incredible thought leader, and she is living in sunny San Diego, California. For So for all of you that are frigid here in the Midwest, just imagine being on the beach somewhere in San Diego. So if you've got that visual for all those listening, let's give a big welcome to Sabine Gideon. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you, John, for having me. And and don't be too jealous. I have the space heater on and it's 60 something degrees outside. Tell me what you think the purpose of human resources is. That's what this show is all about. I know you've got great experience in that, not only educationally, but practically. What do you think? How would you describe the purpose of HR? Yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to share this cuz I I've I've heard a few of your guests respond to that. So I, I wanted to to bring my spin to it. And so I I know a lot of the narrative is the purpose of human resource is to bring the human side or the humanity back in into the workforce. And quite honestly, at first when I heard that I was like, "Oh yeah, that that's completely true." And then I thought about it, I was just like, "That's unfair." That's unfair to put that onus or that entire responsibility and that burden on one function, not to mention it's the one function that has always wanted to do that, but was never allowed or given permission to do that. So I think that in the space that we are right now that, you know, HR, HR putting humanity back into the workforce, that's a given. It's really about HR being the ones who are looking ahead and being able to leverage the human resources, if you will, to bring organizations into a place where, you know, yes, they're profitable. Yes, they're making an impact. Yes, they're, you know, uh, increasing in society, but also helping people grow, helping people develop, helping people evolve. I'm just curious, like this idea of that the, there's a narrative around leadership that has existed in co- corporate for 15, you know, I'll call it the last 15 to 20 years, and even well before that, what leadership meant. And I'm wondering, like, how you see that shifting? What, what, what is the? And, and you wrote a book about it, and I know you have a degree of expertise in that. You've talked to a bunch of leaders, you've observed them, you'd work for them. What, what is that narrative? How is that shifting? And how can HR and leaders? transform in the process to deliver for what our employees, our business, and our communities need? Yeah, I I think the narrative or the assignment that we've given to leadership, to people who are in positions of power or positions of authority, um, over these last few years, I personally, not even just from my education, but I, I personally have been on a uh, introspective journey uh, and in answering the question, who am I? You know, what do I want? What do I value? And it was in me taking the, that moment or that time, and I'm still on the journey to quite to be quite honest, of trying to find those answers that I discovered within myself that I am a leader. And it didn't, it didn't, I didn't need someone to put me in a position or to give me a title or to give me a role. And so from that, I developed the philosophy that I believe that we are all leaders in any capacity that you can, you know, that you can think of. I believe that leadership is innate. It's something that we are all born with. Yes, you can develop it. Yes, you can grow your skill in it. But if we as individuals look at ourselves as leaders, then it becomes a whole lot harder to look at someone else and point the finger when things aren't going right in our lives or things aren't going well in our businesses, right? If we, and I felt this very much so uh, during 2020, that it was just this sense of we, because we had this mindset that someone who sat in a position of power had all the leadership and all the authority and all the power, we inherently abdicated our own power and our own ability to lead in our our particular spheres of influence, no matter how big or small that was. And so that's where I wanted to start with, you know, let's, let's, let's stop looking outwardly. Let's look inwardly 
at where our leadership capability is, our zones of genius, if you will, our unique brilliance. And then how do we, because obviously there are things that I'm uniquely gifted to, to do and to bring forth. There are things that you're uniquely gifted to bring through, right? So how do I look at you in the way that you lead and the way that you operate and in in where you have authority and figure out, okay, where can we, where can we mix that, right? Where, where can I fit my puzzle piece within your puzzle piece or within the broader puzzle? And so I just think that as it relates to leadership, the, the dynamic of removing this, like somebody is at the high, at the, you know, whatever seat, CEO, whatever, to now everyone sees themselves as a leader. Again, it might be uh, idealistic, but if you see yourself as a leader, you will hold yourself accountable. You, you know, you show up differently, right? When you're, when you're seeing yourself as a leader for an organization, imagine if, and there's this whole notion, I, I won't get into it too deep, but that whole democratized leadership where it's about everyone takes on the role of leadership. Everyone shows up as a leader and that it's clearly defined across the organization that these are the attributes of leadership for us. How would you describe someone that does HR like a boss? Someone who describes HR like a boss is someone who is thinking about what will they be doing five years from now, right? There's the day-to-day, don't get me wrong, right? There's the day-to-day and sometimes we get stuck into that, but thinking ahead of five years from now when I'm doing this job, what is it going to look like? What do I need? What do I need to start to plan for? And then starting to, you know, put those pieces into place. And if you have to be the disruptor, because I know that that was a, a huge term in the HR space for a while. If you have to be the disruptor, be the disruptor. Because we can see that in any, in any era, in any period of time, it was those who were willing to go against the grain that we are now talking about as being, you know, pioneers and gurus and everything else. So go against the grain. It'll be worth it. I cannot thank you enough, Sabine, for being on the show. I had a blast. Hopefully you enjoyed being on this side of the the microphone, and uh, I I look forward to hearing all about your successes in the future. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate being here, and thank you for sharing me with your audience. Thanks for checking out the HR Like a Boss podcast. If it resonates with you, please leave a rating and review, or better yet, subscribe and share with a friend. Until next time, let's continue to aspire to do amazingly awesome HR. 